So, we are going to have a bit of a, a conflict resolution here, because I'm going to resolve this conflict that I see in Europe, because it's, the time has come to settle scores with Germany. They've got a rebellion with the communists, I go here to allegiances, I offer support, and I can ask them to become my subject, my protectorate. This is going to be good. Let's see what happens here. Matter of days, and yes, we're lined up there. I will now begin assigning my armies, and whoa, 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 whoa. United Kingdom, I have a defensive alliance with them. I have a trade deal with them. I I have an obligation. Ah, but an obligation doesn't prevent them from being involved in somebody else's diplomatic play, I see. They just don't want France to be strong. They don't want France to do France's thing. England, you've got the Navy. France has got the Army. What? <sighs> or maybe we they have the Army. Their Army projection is 47,000, and I'm at 52,000. Okay, well, that's close. Their fleet strength is at 58, and I'm at 44. They got me beat on the fleet. I don't, if I'm going to have a war with England, I want it to be one where I can tear their empire down, not where it's going to be a squabble over picking up the pieces here in Germany. No. I'm backing out of this war here. I'm not ready for a great war. And the game isn't ready for it either. Uh, yeah, because I couldn't add any other war demands. I should have been able to. If the British are going to get involved, I should have been able to make stuff like, hey, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, and then start raising all my conscripts and raising all my armies and getting the fleets out and everything and building everything in a mad dash. I can't do that here. This war is contained to Germany. I can't do anything else with it. So, this is something that the game needs. The ability to add demands to a play that you're part of, even if you're not somebody who started it, you should be able to say, hey, now that I'm here, I want to add, ask for this, this, and this. You take over. Uh, unless the great power that's with you says, no, we're not doing that, and then you can pull out if you want, whatever. There should be a little more back and forth with that. Second, if I make a war goal demand, I should be able to remove it and say, you know what, maybe I don't want to demand it so much anymore. Maybe just this one here and see if we can get an agreement there. And then I should be able to invite other people because if I'm going against the British, maybe, maybe I need to invite the United States in if they don't like the British, you know, or you know something like that. We should have that capability. We do not have the ability to invite other nations or add other war goals. Uh, we don't have it, the ability to add war goals to an existing conflict. And all of these things were part of 19th century and 20th century diplomacy. It wasn't something that happened because of World War One. The history shows us, even as far back as the Crimean War, you bring in other nations this way and you knock other nations out because of how this is going. But anyway, I'm out. I'm out here. I'm going to build my army and navy, and when I'm done with it, I'm going after Russia because they're weaker. I can tear them apart. And then when I'm done with that, I should have the wherewithal to take out the British if they get feisty with me again. I'm going to pause the game, and when I come back, I'm going to have a bigger army. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go to war with you, Russia. Oh, yeah, you and what army? This one, Lee. This one. <laughs> Look what I got here. I've now got my navy built out to 1,000 ships, 2,000 battalions, practically, and more are on the way. We are going to do this. Come at me, Russia. Come at me. Or, no, better yet, I'll come at you. Yes, and it's a good time to go against Russia because they're at war with the United States and Great Britain. Also, they're involved in a Serbian conflict, but United States and Great Britain, that's, that's awesome there. I like seeing that because now they're distracted. So, I'm going to make some demands here. Let's go ahead and conquer state Greater Caucasus and... I'm going to force a diplomatic play. I don't want them. To, I don't want to click confirm and then immediately the Russians hand me the Caucasus. I want to put some other demands on the list there. So we'll do that. Confirm. 
Now I'm going to demand all of Caucasus area, Kars, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and then I'm going to start liberating some other states. Let's take a look here. I, I want the entire Black Sea to be colored bleu. That's the French blue. Bleu. So let's add the war goals. Conquer state, Russian Dobruja, because that won't go to Ukraine. I checked. Conquer state, Armenia. Why did I check? Because I know I, I'm going to do this war. Conquer state, Azerbaijan. Sh is that cheating? No, it's not cheating to do a little reconnaissance with the save game and then go back to this one here. I know what I want to do here. Conquer state, Russian Kars. And that's that there. Now, if I add other war goals, that's fine. But I want to make sure that the Russians don't give me my primary demand and walk away. Yes, I said let's force a play. I, I've done that. That that part of that that mechanic is over. If I want to make sure we go to a war, I've got to escalate some of these demands. I've got 130 maneuvers in the bank. I can liberate four countries. I'm not going to demand any more states. I'm going to liberate four countries. And I got 10 maneuvers left. That means we're going to add Armenia and Azerbaijan to my primary goals. Yes, I did play ahead. And Russia, if I only ask for Greater Caucasus, Russia says, okay, here. Like right before we get to the war fighting. I added those two and Russia says, I can't give those away. Of course you can't. <laughs> so let's liberate some countries here. <laughs> We're going to liberate Ukraine. Look at how big Ukraine is. That's pretty big. And let's also liberate, um, whoops, no, not liberate your subject, liberate a country, the United Baltic Provinces. See them over there? Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. There we go. And they will connect to a liberated country of Poland. Poland will not be kept off a map. And because they connect, to the Baltic provinces, I can make them a dominion. And as they grow at the expense of Germany and Austria, I will benefit. I've got 30 maneuvers left, and I need to zoom out for this one. You see where the S and I meet in Russian Empire? Right there. Okay, those two provinces, Tomsk and Upper Yeniseysk. Uh, Everything, including those two, and east is Siberia. Add war goal, liberate country, Siberia. You see that? You see the two sides, how like this is liberate Siberia, that block box ends, and they see the S and the I, and then that division, and then all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, we're going to liberate Siberia. So there we go. I've made Caucasus, Armenia, and Azerbaijan my three primary demands. I've got four areas I'm liberating, and I've got Kars and Dobruja tossed in because I like neat borders. Russia will not back down. I know this, and I'm going to now fight my war with Russia. And when I'm done fighting the war, we'll see what it looks like at the end. I'll catch you on the flippity flip. Uh, that means the, the other side of this conflict. It, it's just pause, pause, pause. And now the war is over, as you see here on me map. And because of that lovely little mod that allows me to make protectorates or dominions or puppets out of the countries I liberate, the east is not red. No, no, no. The east is bleu, as in B-L-E-U, as in French bleu blue the east is let's get all, yeah there it is the whole view now is blue the view is blue i love it okay what do we got here siberia ukraine baltic provinces poland i've got like a basically the the idea of the intermarium <laughs> is now french run here uh russia has no border with germany it has a border with france it has a border with well, kind of a border with England, but English concerns there. Okay, French concerns as well here. There is a border with France uh, here in China. Yeah. Uh, we need to see something else here in the game. I, I mentioned we don't have a great war system. We don't have a anti-imperialist movement. Now, 1.7 is going to give us the ability to have 
uh, factions within a country oppose or promote their overlord, or they could actually demand annexation, which will happen if they have the bad enough economy. And the overlord may not want to annex them because they, ah, they have reasons. And some of those reasons may not be reasons you're comfortable with. You may think, yes, I'm against annexation. And then somebody sits next to you and says, yes, I'm against annexation as well. And it's like, oh, you're against it for all the wrong reasons. I don't like you being my political ally. And yet politics does make strange bedfellows, does it not? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do more about that later. But just to say that, you know, there, just as there are movements for and against annexation within the overlord and the dominated country, there sh we should also have things like once you've taken over the country, it shouldn't just be, well, that's it. Why is my China so well behaved? Why is India so well behaved? I can get knowing that, all right, now that I've done what I've done here, I could see the Ottomans decide to oppose me and the Ukrainians resentful of my giving them freedom because, like, why don't they want to be French? I don't get it. You know, yeah, we, we don't want to be French because we're Ukrainian. Uh, things like that. There should be nationalistic movements. Uh, and I, I would see them almost as a playable entity, if not human playable, AI playable, but s somehow a playable entity where India wants to be a nation, China wants to be its own nation, Poland, Czech, you know, Czechia, Slovakia, Hungary, all these different areas of the world that wanted to be their own nation. They should be able to. There should be uh, Algeria as well. Oh my gosh, back in the 1840s, Algeria was a tremendous expense for France. The Philippines were a huge expense for the United States in terms of trying to take them over and having to put large armed forces there to hold down the violence. Well, no. To actually commit more acts of violence to, in the thinking that if we do enough violence, then they'll stop. But they, they just retaliated and they got to... Ah. But there should be that. There should be this expenditure where if you've taken over a country that doesn't feel like it should be taken over, you have to pay for it. You, you mobilize troops to not do an actual war front, but to do occupation duty. There should be, a, a, we, we should be able to, you know, leave them in the barracks, send them to the front line, or put them on occupation duty. And there, your occupation duty troops, you may not equip them with flamethrowers and machine guns and all that cool stuff, and you may not give them extra rations. You may just say, look, you're cheap, you're local, Oppress. Just do that. Can you? It, that's all they need to do. Local militias that are doing that. We should have that kind of capability where we are required to make the expense, and we should be able to see the expenses. How much do we spend on occupation of an area, and how much are we getting back from it right now? And then try to decide: Is it going to be really worth it that much more later on? Not only in terms of accounting, but also in terms of. Like, if we give it away, what does it mean for our nation's prestige? And like if, if France suddenly abandons Algeria and cuts it loose, that's a huge calamity. But if I let Morocco go, ah, nobody cares. I'll let Egypt go, ah, come on. There should be something like the loss of Algeria equivalent to any nationalist movement that there should be the anti-nationalist forces within the central government that say no, under no circumstances do we let that go. I mean, in this case here, you see India right there. There should be people in London saying India is part of Britain right now in this, in this game here. And if there is an Indian uprising movement, it should be trying to topple the British government in India. And although there may be people back up in London saying, yeah, let's let India go, we're sympathetic with that movement, the other group would say, no, they must stay part of us. And there should be people in India who profit from that relationship with England that want to preserve it. We should have this dynamic that's being talked about for protectorates, dominions, and puppets. It should extend also to occupied peoples who may be in a fully incorporated state. But if they are not an accepted group, or even if they are an accepted group, I mean, just because you adopt multiculturalism doesn't mean suddenly everybody in India is happy about being part of the British Empire. It may make them less unhappy, but still, they you're going to have a significant group that say, quit India. Get out of here because you there's an unequal relationship going on, and we are made to suffer for your benefit. 
I, I should have the same thing in China right now. The French own it right now. I should have been able to you know, do something about it possibly breaking up and getting in front of it, but saying, well, let's just click the button that says Annex. Yeah, I've got a mod that lets me do that, but it, you know, let's say that it was a smaller country even. If Cuba, I shouldn't just be able to say Annex Cuba, and then they go, oh, well, we've been annexed. Uh, we'll, let's have one rebellion and then we're done, which happened in China. I had the one rebellion, and once all once I had like 350 million radicals secede and then conquered them again. I conquered them; they were no longer radical, and I had only like 90 million radicals in my empire after that. You know, it's gone up to 110, and that's probably because I took over the Caucasus, and they're kind of mad about that. We should have these kinds of movements, but we don't. Uh, we we just don't. I, I was I was demoing the game for my brother the other day, and showing him some late game stuff. And he goes, "Well, how come we can't have a world war? It's 1917." Like, well, yeah, but game maturity, and and that's another area we should consider the maturity of Victoria Three. It should take about three years is what I thought, from when it was released to when it's going to be mature enough to really cover all the key things it should be covering. That's how long it took to get to Heart of Darkness in Victoria 2. And then after that, modders came in and descended upon it and fixed a lot of things. But we had the key mechanics we needed there. And if you look at other big title games, Civilization VI, uh, Hearts of Iron, uh, City Skylines, Crusader Kings, they take about three years to get good. We're about a year and a half into that cycle with Victoria 3. Another year and a half, we're going to be amazed at what we have here. I'm already very happy with what I have, and I know it's getting better. I'm excited about 1.7. Oh my gosh, is it like, it's still a, over a month before it releases? Oh. But yeah, I'm ready for it. And I'm ready for what's going to come after that. And I know they've got to do something about great wars and nationalist movements. There's just not enough flavor with those right now. And that needs to be added. When it's done, this game is really going to be ready for prime time. It's getting there, though. And as it is, I'm very happy with what I've done with France. But we're at 1921. The game is moving slowly. I, I, have, lot, I have good mods that keep it from being unplayable. But it's something where I don't really want to just sit here and let it go slowly through the days while I'm playing through. Early game, yeah, I can just let it run while I talk and click around and jump on things because it goes fast. This late game, even with the mods that consolidate things, it just takes time. And, yeah, I got things to do. Anyway, uh, that's the... so. If you ever are having a diplomatic play to take over Germany and the Russians are involved and then the British also get involved, back out, build up your army, destroy the Russians, and now if we take a look at what the British have, their army strength is 63,000, their naval strength is 69,000, my army strength is 114,000, double theirs, and my navy strength is 81,000, which is... Not double, but it's more than what they got. I've been researching my military technology. I'm ready to go, except for the fact that there's one more thing I can't do with the British, and that is free India. The, this, the way I carved Russia out there, Siberia, Ukraine, Baltic Republics, boom, it's a... I, I must confess, I did a little save game. I used some cheats, and I ruined my relationship with England so I could see what could I take away from them. The biggest areas I could strip from them were Ireland. And that's about it. I, I could break out India one state at a time. There was no click this button to send all of India free. And actually, on, on reflection, I probably wouldn't want to do that as France because then that would tell all the Chinese, hey, guess what? That's the thing to do now. And then they'd all rise up against me. I don't, but still, I didn't have that option. You know, I could free Ireland, I could free Scotland, but India is not a creatable nation right now. I don't get it. But that, that would be, again, a function of a nationalist movement within the game that would allow me to have that option there. We need that. 
<sighs> so anyway, how's the game going to play out? I look at my GDP. I'm at 1.7 billion. The British are at 1.3 billion. War slowed me down. Uh, I, my taxes are at plus 5 million. I'm going to build up, uh, spend a few weeks building up my reserves, and then I'm dropping taxes completely. And we're going to have a boom out. Uh, that'll help things out there. It'll improve my standard of living greatly. Uh, so yeah, but eventually, I, 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 even if the British are hostile to me, we're not going to have a conflict. And it's going to get to the 1930s, and it's going to move even slower, and I'm dang sure not going to start a war then. I just do not want to do that. This is probably going to be the last thing I do for France in this playthrough. And I want to save my U.S. playthrough for when... Uh, the next DLC releases, so maybe I'll pick a small country and mess around with that for the next play. And everybody goes, oh, play this country, play this country. Hold on right there. I can't play every country all at once. I can pick one. And I want to pick one that's interesting to me. You play the one that's interesting to you, and you may want me to play the one that's interesting to you, but it's not interesting to me, so I'm going to increase your radicalism by not picking the country you want me to pick. Except for the one person who looks at it and I pick the country that they did want me to pick, and then they go, yes, he picked my country. Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what I do. Uh, I'll think about it. And if you're on my Discord server, you can try to sway me one way or the other. We'll see. But I've got some space between now and when I do the USA on, January, on June 24th, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, au revoir from France. Let's hope that we soon get great wars, and maybe if a modder can do it, that'd be great, as well as movements for freedom within, you know, nationalist movements within incorporated territory. So until next time, I hope all your diplomatic plays go the way you want. I hope your mods all work, and I hope you never get cut off in the middle of a sentence, especially when you get to a really juicy part that everyone's going to be very interested in because you're going to spill all the beans about.